Hi, I'm Mornay Christo. And I'm Louis Egon Brecht. And you're watching The Dan Show, your healthy dose of dive safety tips and more. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Dan Legal Net. And um, I thought to invite Louis back again to uh, give us some practical examples of how the Legal Network can uh, assist divers in, in the field. But before we start, you had an interesting uh, uh, thing you, you told me about just now. Something about Dan's always got new things going. In the good old days, uh, all legal students or all students studying law had to study Latin. Uh, that has recently not been made a, an essential requirement due to simply the following. Imagine me being robed and I'm addressing the judge and I'm saying, Ex Dan est semper aliquid novi. <laughs> Which basically means that from Dan there's always something new. Let's explore a little bit um, more about the Dan Legal Network. Um, recently I got a call uh, by the you know the hotline um, and Laurel asked me what are we going to do with this and uh, I said well Louis is the guy you know mm -hmm. so uh, we patched the call through to you I don't know if you recall Louis and it was really about um, a guy that loves diving he's got a whole bunch of friends and you know he's got this big Vito Mercedes bus and he can put a whole bunch of oaks in there and then put a trailer behind and off they go to Sudwana, Ponte de Ora, wherever they want to go but his worry or concern was, are there any legal implications? Does he need like a professional license? Um, you know, what if the cops stop him at the end of the day? Yes, very interesting question. Actually, very important question. Uh, the moment you have passengers on board a vehicle and they start to uh, contribute to your toll gates payment or they start contributing to your fuel that you're paying on board, those passengers are no longer social passengers. They now become passengers for remuneration or against remuneration. Now a very interesting thing that happened in the Road Accident Fund Act is in 2008, the act was amended to make these passengers social passengers. Why I'm mentioning this is before 2008, the maximum claim in the event of a motor car accident in which they were injured or killed, that means the estate would claim, was only 25,000. So whether it be a neurosurgeon that was involved in this motor car accident and he had a, uh, an expectancy of earning remuneration for three to four million rand in future or maybe even more, the Road Accident Fund stopped that at 25,000 rand. Now folks remember, this has changed, but this brings in another angle. And invariably, also in my neck of the woods, where people ride together, people go to the Pontas, they go to the Sodwanas, they go together in the same vehicle. Now we call it the, the, the little microbus. And to compound all of this, you stick in a lot of high pressure vessels, cylinders, yeah. you stick them in the trailer. Yeah. Hey, you can't go scuba diving with that cylinder. And there you go. So we don't think about the possible implications of all of this. Now, that is where it's important to know that you're covered by the Dan legal network. Uh, should there be a situation that happens to you on well, hang on, we, we, we can't say covered, I guess, because uh, they're really filing for a bus, but we can cover them with a bus, is that, that correct? That's correct. Okay, okay. now just checking that. No, no, that's, that's fine. No, so no. we cover them with the knowledge that should something happen, we are there on a 24-7 basis. What is important about the question is remember that when you are riding together, it's not just simply you riding by yourself, traveling by yourself, en route to your dark destination. There certainly are implications that we need to be aware of. Okay, well, lots to think about. And, uh, you know, if you guys want some more information on all things relating to legal aspects, traveling with people, either as a passenger, I guess, or even as the person transporting friends, please give the Dan call, uh, uh, or sorry, the Dan Legal Network a call. Toll free in South Africa, it's 0800 020 Take a note now, and internationally you need to, to, to dial something different, and it's the international South African code, plus 27828106010. Louis, another call I got uh, not too long ago, in fact, uh, a little bit of a sad case this time, at uh, one of uh, the dive uh, shops in, in the country, we uh, had a death, and um, obviously, 
uh, the dive operator, the staff had a, had a rough time dealing with that. So one, you've got the medical kind of side, uh, other, you know, coping with the stress of somebody dying, the family. But uh, the dive operator contacted us and wanted to know, you know, is there kind of a, a legal thing I need to do to cover myself in case the, the family or friends maybe want to sue me? I, I don't know. I said, look, from my side, I don't know. But once again, we've got the legal network. Let's make use of it. And what, what advice have you got for a guy like that? That's a very important question. Um, last year, towards the end of last year, there was an incident in our South African courts that happened to be in, uh, in, in the Cape area where the judge actually uh, decided and ruled that the question of indemnities, now remember indemnities are applicable wherever you have some sort of a diving operation, whether you are an operator, an instructor, um, or the owner of a dive shop. If somebody enters your dive shop, they do so at a certain uh, vulnerability to yourself. If they fall over, if they bump their heads and so forth, and you cannot just rely on simple indemnities. Uh, one of the things that's important is also proper signage on your premises. But pertinently to the question is, yes, there are certainly legal implications in um, injury, loss of property, death, and so forth. And that's where it's important that if you again feel vulnerable, phone the hotline. What in all probability will happen is you will have an answer, you will be advised on what to do immediately, and should you receive a summons later in the mail and uh, or by word of the sheriff, and you are sued for legal implications on what happened on your boat, in your shop, at your school, Dan will certainly assist you in referring you to a proper uh, legal representative to assist you further in the matter. Yep. Well, okay, so it can be quite complicated, but as long as you fo follow the, the basic steps, you, you kind of cover yourself automatically. But I think many people get nervous and then they either just run off and start doing some odd things or just want to give as much information as possible. And I guess that's where the legal line really comes in. You know, it's just calm down, relax, think about what's going on. And this is the advice, take it or leave it, I guess. I think the important part of your statement is also the preventative component. Um, Dan has various research projects and also has various um, opportunities where you can get involved preempting any problem that might exist again on your premises, on your boat, on your vehicle and so forth, where you are, once you are a Dan partner, we assist you in auditing your operation, your boat, your premises, your vehicle and give you advice proactively on what to do to prevent any exposure to possible civil and or criminal liability. Remember that. Yeah, I guess you're right. That leads into the, the Diving Safety Partner Program and, and once again the, the HIRA or Hazardous Identification Risk Assessment, a way to prevent things from happening and also identifying risks and hazards and how to deal with them, I guess. You know, you mentioned putting up signs I mean, they're small things, you know, but if one thinks about it, when you get that letter or somebody wants to do something to you, then you think, gosh, if I just did that, I would have saved myself a lot of hassle at the end of the day. And I guess many times it's not just a nice to do thing, but it's uh, something that um, uh, you need to do it by law, I guess, and people aren't always aware of that. Absolutely. Um, as I always say, when we go diving and we all love diving, we basically on holiday. We don't initially recognize or even realize the potential risks that we are exposing ourselves to. And that is once again where Dan is there and we would like to assist you in actually mitigating any possible risk and then should an unfortunate incident happen to assist you appropriately, timelessly and the best to you of your and our business. So yeah, I have a question, this wasn't uh, by the hotline at all, but uh, I don't know if it's still like this or not, but my time many years ago in Mozambique when I used to run dive operations and things there, you know, as you go through the South African border into Mozambique, you always had to take out third party uh, insurance in case you, I guess, run over somebody. What's the deal about that? You know, that, does it actually have any impact? Will it help you? Or is it just a money making thing from the Mozambican authorities? It absolutely assists. Uh, the system of third party liability injury for uh, any third party as such, remember I started off with the road accident fund thing. Their concept of road accident uh, injuries, 
or and or fatalities is quite different than ours and their principle states that when you get to the border you actually buy this third party uh, insurance document uh, portfolio to be covered as such remember one thing and that is why I love the question coming from you yeah. is we're in a foreign country first of all there's a foreign language secondly there's a foreign legal system thirdly there are various implications yeah. like for sake of argument if you get stopped um, one of the issues is you pay the officer that stops you yeah. um, are you talking you, about trigger money now? Uh, sure, yeah, oh, okay. for lack of a better word, <laughs> okay. yes All right. I'm almost an ex Mozambique is semper aliquid novi okay. but either <laughs> as it, it remains it remains a, a diving paradise um, lovely to be in, lovely to dine, lovely to stay and the Mozambican people on the, in the most, and this is just by the way, I have found very friendly. Yeah. So, but you are in the foreign country, um, you have, com have to comply with their rules. And as I've also said in one of the inquiries that we had, being abroad, there was an incident and we, we advise always to cooperate. And this is part of the, of the preventative program, is that a suggestion that I think we need to place on the table is to give you some sort of resume to carry with the member. Yeah. So that when you are stopped, obviously in English, in Portuguese, or whichever language, just show the person that is stopping you that this is your situation, you are going to cooperate, and then you capacitate that person with the necessary information. Well, I mean, there, there, there's a lot to think about yes. there, and uh, it's almost like a how-to guide, I guess, yes, but absolutely. in bullet form. So, yeah, yes. we can explore that. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Um, what about the guys, Louis, that uh, work in, say, Mozambique? You know, South Africans, they don't have a working permit. Yes. Uh, but, you know, they've got some arrangement to have an extended visa, possibly. And uh, they go out, um, you know, for a meal one evening and something happens. You know, they maybe have a few more uh, or too many drinks or somebody else, a uh, local, uh, drives into them and they end up at the local police station. They don't speak the language. Um, they're really scared, they're out of the sort of environment of, uh, you know, comfort zone. So what advice do you have for guys like that? Can the legal network, uh, you know, help them in a situation like that? Most certainly it can. Most certainly phone the day in the hotline. Um, obviously you will have a different SIM card in your phone, you will have communications. So once you have the communications, phone the day in the hotline. What our uh, provision then is, we will by all means either we will assist you telephonically immediately and then build up a network of referrals to actually go and assist you in the legal system in Mozambique. So guys we have to wrap it up now that's uh, about all the time we have for uh, this week's episode but Louis before we go your safety legal tip for the week what would that be? Dive safe Take care, cooperate at all times with any legal system that you're in and rather be preventative than that you need to do damage control afterwards and that is what Dan is all about. To prevent you and capacitate, to prevent any possible uh, incident happening to you by the way of being there as a backup should it happen but firstly capacitate you with the necessary information in the interests of diving safety. Uh, who are you? I'm Louis Engelbrecht. I'm Ornette Christo and you watch The Dan Show.